Hey everybody, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy where the proof is in the singing. I'm continuing my series on taking isolated vocal tracks. I'm doing an analysis, a vocal tutorial, and talking about the recording process as well. Next up is Sting. That's right, Sting from The Police. Uh, we're gonna do Roxanne, which is really cool. If you guys don't mind, please like and subscribe to my channel. That would be really cool. Uh, I also have a singing course. The course is called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. You can find it right here at KenTamplinVocalAcademy.com where I also have over 20,000 people in my free singing forums. For any of you guys out there interested in learning how to sing, already a decent singer or even an advanced singer, there's a lot of great talent in there uh, along with my course. So I just want to get started right away and just dive right in. So this is Sting Roxanne. Let's do this. Roxanne. You don't have to put on the red light. I've noticed um, he is one of the most difficult guys to try to reproduce when you're going to do like, a, you know, how to sing like, how to sing like Sting or whomever. There are character voices that are just kind of better left alone. So if I were to do a, a police song or a Sting song, I'd probably just sing it like me and not try to imitate or emulate or, you know, whatever, clone his sound because um, he's so unique in his sound. Now, I have put him in my all time greatest bass players that can sing, my top 10 greatest greatest bass players that can sing. I'll put that video in the description because you guys, you bass players out there might be interested in that. But um, I want to go ahead and talk about how he tapers off every, you know, Roxanne, you don't have to put on the red light. Like as he comes off of all of his phrases, he tapers them off. So he comes in with a hit. By the way, he doesn't support a lot with his singing until he goes up pretty high, like in the chorus. Um, but if you notice, listen really closely, he tapers off the back end of his vocals. So we always think of him as being this really authoritative singer. He's really not actually. He's pretty, pretty gentle on the sound until he needs to lean into it. So listen to it again. Check it out. Roxanne. You don't have to put on the red light. So did you, Roxanne, you don't have to put on the red light. Right, check it out one more time. Sorry to do this, beat you up with this, but it's, I'm gonna make a point about this later, about support and about holding notes, about one of the reasons he doesn't use any vibrato per se and things like that, because of the way he supports his notes. Okay, that's really important. So one more time, check it out. Roxanne, you don't have to put on the red light. See, you don't have to put on the red light. Right, he's got a caprino, a goat's wiggle vibrato. Let's keep going. Those days are over. By the way, his note choices are really da, ba, 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 ba. They're very jazz influenced if you really think about it. Like they're not really normal kind of vocals and he's a phenomenal lyricist. You know, just think about all the great lyrics that he's written. But as you guys know, or may not know, uh, he got his name because he used to wear this bumblebee jacket around town when he was playing some of these jazz clubs. And they said, hey, this is the Sting, that's Bumblebee guy. We nicknamed him Sting, that's how he got his name. Now this song was also an interesting story and I did this in one of my uh, tutorials, I think, What Makes a Singer Great, I think, um, where um, I talked about this particular song where they had had some gig and I want to say it was in the red light district in Amsterdam if I'm not mistaken and uh, the gig got canceled because the main act they were only warming up and the main act pulled out they got stiffed they'd driven for hours in the I think the drummer's car or something you know southern I don't remember one of the players cars and ended up in a really nasty seedy area in the red light district in Amsterdam had to get a motel where they all three had to cramp in a room together he was walking around town and he says as he called them these young birds that he could actually see himself with it broke his heart and so he went on to write the song Roxanne which became one of their first greatest hits don't you think that's interesting so an inspiration of something something on the road and something that tugged at his heartstring became the very thing that the band kind of initially became known for. So I'm going to continue on and I want you, again, we're going to talk more about his support. We talked about his Goat's Wiggle Vibrato. Check it out. Listen. So here we go. Those days are over. You don't have to show your body to the night. So those, di those days are over. You don't have to show your body to the night. Right? So though it's pentatonic and kind of, you know, minor key in a pentatonic kind of way, um, a lot of the stabs and stuff are like, I could hear like a jazz player playing that rather more than a singer. You know what I mean? So let's continue. And he almost kind of reggae too, because the song's kind of reggae, right? So we'll continue here. Here we go. Roxanne. By the way, Sand, Roxanne, right? You kind of hear that he's, he's not really, he's not, Roxanne, right? He's not doing that. You don't have 
to wear that dress tonight. By the end. Wear that dress tonight. <laughs> Hear that? Listen, listen, listen to this. Whoops. Sorry, let's get back to this. Here we go. Tonight. <laughs> Walk the streets for money. You don't care if it's wrong or if it's right. Roxanne. Now he's got a Roxanne. He brings this sound really far into the front of the face, right? And this stuff's pretty high to sing. I mean, you might not think about it, but try to do some of his stuff, especially some of his earlier stuff, uh, Message in a Bottle, some of these other things. Um, maybe not so much, you know, um, some of his more commercial stuff, but this stuff was certainly a lot higher and harder to sing. But let's continue. Here we go. You don't have to put on the red light. See it? Put on the red light. You know, here, back off, right? Roxanne. You don't have to put on the red light. Now, the reason I bring this up is in no way to diminish the amazing talent of Sting. But I have to put flesh and blood on this stuff, guys. It's the only thing that makes sense for all of us musicians going, okay, that's untouchable. I could never achieve or attain that level of success. He's very human in his approach. It's just, it's his bass playing. It's kind of like Getty Lee, you know? He, he sings really high and plays this crazy bass stuff. Well, he sings these really amazing staggered notes and stuff. So he's able to play bass in a very progressive three-piece band and pull it off and make it sound good, right? So you're hearing a lot of funk and kind of a little pitchy stuff here and there but that's not what that's not what the police were about and that's not what sting became known for as like the ultimate singer if anything he's kind of like the ultimate singer songwriter that got known as a singer bass player because of what a great songwriter and performer he was rather than the other way around of being a great singer and then good at songwriting okay so let's kind of be clear on that as we're going through this i don't care if you have man love for sting i'm going to call a spade a spade just talk about it like it is so please bear with me when i do that because I'm doing this because he is awesome, not because I think he sucks and, and I'm just trying to find fault with him. So please know that. Here we go. Put on the red light. Uh, Put on the red light. Hear that? Put on the red light. Put on the red light. Put on the red light. Oh. See, it's kind of, hey. Right, so it's it's pretty it's pretty human if you ask me. So let's continue. Here we go. Next line. I love you since I knew ya. Now, by the way, I love you since I knew ya. Right, it's kind of pitchy, right? But it's more just kind of about the vibe of it. it kind of like Lenny Kravitz. Like, there's a lot of people that do this where it's it's really about the vibe, and you get the you you it, the melody is kind of implied, or the precision of the melody is implied because of the authority by which he sings it. It's not the other way around. It's not like Steve Perry, where wait, Steve Perry's all of his notes are spot on, and we expect that of Steve. We expect some swagger and some loose, this loosey goosiness in the vocal. Check it out again. Listen to the beginning of this line. Here we go. I love you since I knew you. Yeah, one, two, three. Ta da. I love you since I knew you. Yeah? I wouldn't talk down to you. I have to tell you just how I feel. I won't share you with another boy. Do you see how light he's singing? He's not, I love her since I knew ya. He's not, I love you since I knew ya. I would not talk down to ya. Right, he's really gentle on it, though he's got a naturally gifted high voice, but he's able to kind of back it off. Kind of reminds me too of um, like the outfield or something like that with someone with just a really high natural voice. You know, uh, uh, you guys get the point, but someone that Ron a or John Anderson from Yes, you know, and some of these people you have these really gifted, um, the guy that sang for guitar, GTR, I don't know if you remember that, um, um, some of those bands are just beautiful, pristine, high voices, so he's got that. I love you since I knew you. I wouldn't talk down to you. I have to tell you just how I feel. I won't share you with another boy. Now, I want to point out one more thing about smaller voices for you, you know, singer audiophile guys out there. There is such a <laughs> combining two phrases. Um, people that have smaller voices, Right. So if you guys like I mentioned a couple people like I just mentioned the outfield, for example, and I mentioned uh, the guitar, the guy that sing, sang for the band um, uh, 
the guy that left Yes, what's his name? Uh, Steve Howe um, had a, a band when he left Yes and there was a band called GTR Guitar and you'll hear some of their stuff. It's real old 80s stuff. If you don't know, don't worry about it. But anyway, some of these bands with a smaller voice, the dynamic range of volume going back and forth is not as extreme, right? So you're gonna notice that there's not a lot of dynamic range. It's kind of like on, middle, and off. There's no like big velocity changes in the voice. So his subtleties in the way he sings soft, he has to kind of make up for it a little bit with little chirps in his throat and some other emotional things that he brings into it and scooping and stuff like that because he doesn't have a big voice. So he doesn't have a lot on his, uh, you know, in his toolbox, so to speak, to create a lot of emotion. He finds other ways of doing it and we're hearing him do that here. But just notice that the velocity of a smaller voice is either loud, kind of medium or soft and there's not a lot of nuance in between it because it's very tubular and very pointed and smaller in its in its um, origination of its sound. Here we go. I know my mind is made up, so put away your makeup. Told you once, I won't tell you again. It's a bad way. See what I mean? Roxanne, Roxanne, you don't have to put on the red light. Okay, now. Another thing is, if you notice, there's some instability in his voice. And I want to point it out again here because you don't really notice it because you got this band slamming with a cool, in this case, kind of a you know, reggae sort of groove. You don't notice that it, it voice, it sometimes his voice kind of seems like a donkey on the edge, right? In pitch, Cabano's like that, right? We know David Bowie was like that. A lot of singers where their voice is just kind of struggling on the edge of trying to get good pitch, hold on to notes, good intonation. And you really hear that here. Listen, listen, check it out. You don't have to put on the red light. You don't have to put on the red light. Right? It's not very exacting. It's not, it's not very precision. Uh, but that's, again, not what he's about. It's about emotion and telling the story and, and being a great singer, songwriter, bass player. Roxanne. Roxanne. Right? You don't have to put on the red light. So put on the red. Hear the kind of you know chirping and the instability in his voice. Listen closely, man, because you would never pick this out. I don't think in a song, right? Check it out. Listen. Here we go. You don't have to put on the red light. You don't have to put on the red light. That's strong. Put on the red light. Put on the red light. Now, before we go in too much farther, I want to talk to you guys about technique. So, um, a lot of instrumentalists have a tough time, rightfully so, because they have a tough time just being the singer standing up and focusing on the diaphragm. Hey, 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 and having all this strength do all of its work for you. Instead, they rely a lot on the throat and you hear a lot of this. In fact, I wanna back this up one more time all the way back to here so that you can hear a lot of instability as a direct result of not supporting really well. Now, the reason I say a lot of instrumentalists do this is because when you're a bass player, whether you're right or left-handed, you're kind of turning this way, you're kind of hunched over, instrument might be heavy or not, depends, um, and your lungs are kind of collapsed or your rib cages kind of collapsed, so the intercostal muscles in the lung are kind of collapsed and it inhibits the ability for the diaphragm to breathe out and then to pull in, you know, hey, to have that strength to pull in on the sound. So you have to know how to work on that. I cover all of this in my singing course, how you have to work on standing up straight, kind of pushing your instrument away from you a little bit, and then getting that breath together, and then learning how to sing, and then incorporating the two together so you can maintain good breath control while you play your instrument. This is also true for keyboard players. When keyboard players are sitting down, you lose up to 30% of your support when you're sitting down. So you know whether it's an Elton John or whomever it is, even Freddie Mercury, when he was sitting, you could hear the support drop and the support mechanism not have the same strength as when they're standing up or really understanding how to, how to first learn to sing with good support and then include the instrument after. So we hear that here. Check it out. Roxanne. So he's in the chorus. He's belting. You don't have to put on the red light. Put on the red light. Hear the instability one more time. Check it out. You don't have to put on the red light. Hear that? You don't have to put on the red light. You don't have to put on the red light. 
Now when he gets in the chorus, he digs in and he, you know, he's real chesty in the sound, so he's he's using that. But the chest voice only lasts so long. For you singers out there, you notice, you know, if you use only your a chest voice in the sense of of using your chest as the um, engine that drives your car for sound, you get three, four, five songs, and then it starts to go to the throat and you start to lose it, as opposed to if you use your diaphragm as the engine that drives your car, you can keep going and going and going because this mechanism is a lot greater than this mechanism for supporting and sustaining sound, okay? Put on the red light. Put on the red light. Put on the red light. By the way, these are short stabs. So, put on the red light. Put on the red light. So, they're not big long phrases, so he's able to get more power out of them. Instead of having a long phrase, you have to sustain a lot of power to its end, like a Whitney Houston. Right? She's got a big, long sustain. He can never do something like that the way he's supporting the sound. Or, or a D.O. He can never support th that kind of sound. So. Put on the red light. Put on the red light. Put on the red light. Okay, so now I want to show you how this sounds when we come over here and we add this sound with the band. And this is really important because it's it covers up a multitude of sin. And because it covers up so much sound in the end, and I'm gonna have his vocals louder than it would be on the on, a, on an album, so you can really hear the vocals too. And by the way, this is a karaoke version track. I had to match uh, the track to the vocals. So it's not the original track. It doesn't hit as hard, it's not as big. But it gives you the, the idea of like how much it covers up the vocal. Check this out, here we go. Roxanne, you don't have to put on the red light. Those days are over. You don't have to show your body to the night. Roxanne. See, don't you feel or get the impression that because there's so much energy driving with the band that it makes his voice sound like it has a lot more energy, a lot more authority, and a lot more strength than it really does? That's important, folks. Check this out, let's continue. You don't have to wear that dress tonight. Walk the streets for money. You don't care if it's wrong or if it's right. Roxanne. Now, one more thing. If you notice, this track is pretty bone dry. So I think we got a track with just very little reverb on it. So in fairness, I want to add a couple of effects to this. So what I'm going to do is, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to add a long haul, a little bit of a long haul. I'm going to add a room that I created that's pretty bright, but it's a pretty short room that's bright. Then I'm going to add another room that's a little longer, and then I'm going to add a tiny bit of delay. Now, just very little because the track is so sparse, we don't want to hear a lot of delay, but I want you to notice how big this track sounds now, or bigger the track sounds, and how much bigger his vocal sounds with those in play. Okay, check it out. Rock slam. You don't have to put on the red light Maybe a little too much, I'll back some off Those days are over You don't have to show your body to the night Okay, so I backed it off a little bit, it was like too much But let's try it again, check it out, here we go Roxanne You don't have to put on the red light Those days are over You don't have to show your body to the night Roxanne, you don't have to wear that dress tonight. And what also this does is it makes the track, his vocal track, a little more fluid and floaty and, and his phrases hang on longer and make you think that his phrases are longer than they really are because of the reverbs, etc. All right, guys, hopefully this was helpful and enjoyable and definitely check out my next video.